Seven decades ago, 13 WMAZ began serving the people of Central Georgia. I was introduced to it by my mom, and then my mom introduced my daughter to it. You let us become part of your lives and put your trust in the many faces that brought you the news. Straight winds, downbursts, tornadoes. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Tina Hicks. When it matters to Central Georgia, 13 WMAZ was there and still is to listen and give you a voice, too. That's our editorial board's opinion. What's yours? Through fun times. World champs! World champs! And hard times. When we go ahead and evacuate now, all of our furniture and stuff is like up near the ceiling. For the last 70 years and into the future, we're here to serve you straight from the heart. The year was 1953. Sir Edmund Hillary led the first expedition to the summit of Mount Everest. And the New York Yankees beat the Brooklyn Dodgers to win their fifth straight World Series. A brand new publication hit newsstands, the TV Guide. And on September 27, 13 WMAZ broadcast on television for the very first time. Welcome to this celebration of 70 years serving Central Georgia, straight from the heart. As we take a tour down memory lane, we want to start with what matters most to the history of the station. People. The people behind the scenes, the people selling ads, the people delivering the news, and you, the people who have watched and supported us across seven decades. Some 13 WMAZ viewers are so loyal, they've watched since the very beginning. As Suzanne Lawler shows us, for one family, 13 WMAZ is a family tradition. TV the cat brought us good luck and served as the mascot until the 1970s. And now, 70 years since 1953, the station, the personalities, and the good times are woven into the fabric of people's lives. I was introduced to it by my mom, and then my mom introduced my daughter to it. Michelle Clark says Channel 13 is generational in her family. She grew up with Bill Powell, Tina Hicks, and Frank Malloy. And sure, faces have changed through the years, but in this family, the dial never did. She told us that we had to watch the full segment of the news before we could watch SpongeBob. Jump, jump. This is home. My grandma would look forward to Fridays on the news because of the song. 11-year-old Taylor Clark is talking about her grandmother, Henrietta. The cheerleading and basketball coach who worked in Jones County would call foul if anyone didn't run a full court press to channel 13 at 6 o'clock. The news is on. Turn, hurry up and turn to the news. And I'm like, Mama, you already saw it. I'm going to watch it again. She was the most amazing grandmother ever. Henrietta was special. She called her granddaughter every day after school, pumped her with confidence, and told Taylor she could do anything. So maybe what happened next isn't that much of a surprise. Hello. I'm here for Taylor Clark. Hey! So now you're a junior journalist. Is there anything you want to say? I want to say thank you to my grandma. Last year, Taylor became one of us, got her official badge, and began reporting as a JJ. Offering art classes and music lessons since 1976. Her biggest cheerleader, the woman that encouraged her to become a junior journalist, Henrietta never got to see that happen. A year from last February, she passed away. Like she's still watching me from up there, like from heaven, but it's just that it's just kind of different. Henrietta did know Taylor was going to audition. And who knows? Maybe she gave Taylor the confidence boost during the process. One thing is for sure. The woman who nudged her granddaughter to stay informed inspired a part of our future. Suzanne Lawler, 13 WMAZ News. We know there are many other stories like that of families building memories around 13 WMAZ. We want to hear more as we celebrate 70 years of service to Central Georgia. Some of you have already chimed in. Here's Jolly from the early children's program, the Jack and Jolly Show. Billy Gray shared this picture of her dad, Billy Cook, who played Jolly. Here's another photo from the early days, 1959, and that is Del Ward sharing the talents of a young drummer, Sammy Deep. And remember Facebook fans of the day? Alan still uses his 13 WMAZ coffee mug. Thanks for sharing. We have more memories coming up throughout this show. 
Here at 13 WMAZ, while we documented life in central Georgia, we also managed to save a few mementos along the way. Our archive room holds memorabilia and documents that date back to the earliest days of 13 WMAZ. That includes film, photos, industry information, promotional items through the years, and more. We found photos of anchors through the years, even portraits of some of your favorites. So many faces and personalities have shared their time and talents here on 13 WMAZ's airwaves. We couldn't possibly name them all, but here are a few special people that you've invited into your homes and your hearts. From the early days, many of the voices of WMAZ radio became the faces of WMAZ television. WMAZ's application for a television station has been today approved by the Federal Communications Commission. Early viewers will remember Helen Farmer, later Helen Popejoy. She hosted the program Hospitality House. One hour and 15 minutes. Every day? Monday through Friday, Herb Johnson and I co-hosted the show. Her co-host was early news announcer Herb Johnson, who also played a cowboy character named Single Shot Johnson. But I tell you what, it's time to get to that picture now. Among the on-air talent with Johnson was news editor and announcer Wilton Cobb, sportscaster Bob Savage, personality Jack Owens, and news reporter Stan Carey. Oh, I did the 6 and 11 for uh, a majority of the uh, 20 years I was there. The station's religious director also had his own program on radio and TV, the Reverend Jimmy Waters. We went to our set for instance, and uh, we did some songs. Uncle Ned was next to me, and he was on next, you see. In 1957, Del Ward joined the station doing local interviews, but she actually made history in 1965. It was a, a, an honor that was given to me by Channel 13 that I would do the first live program in color. Her date with Dell interviews would become a station staple for the next four decades, and Dell's personal profiles aired each month after her retirement in 1997. Like Dell, Doris Martin was around from the early days. She was a weather forecaster and also hosted local telethons for many years, starting with the earliest ones, live from the Macon City Auditorium. Always a very big crowd. It was just very exciting. The news has always played a major role in Channel 13's programming. In the 70s and 80s, the voice and reporter behind many of Central Georgia's biggest stories was Bill Tribble. He worked at 13 WMAZ for 35 years as a reporter, news director, and executive editor. In fact, Tribble preserved much of the station's archive footage of big news events through the close-up program. Straight winds, downbursts, tornadoes. But it was another Bill, Bill Powell who became a mainstay of Channel 13 and connected with the community so deeply. Central Georgia already knew Old Bill from local radio, but in 1982, he joined the TV team as a weatherman. At his retirement party, Bill's sense of humor never failed. He even picked at me. He's a terrific family man. He's extremely lazy. <laughs> I came to the station the same year old Bill started and had the pleasure of working with sports director Bobby Pope. You know, trying to cover three games, whether you were at Henderson Stadium and Porter Stadium and then try to run down to International Stadium in Warner Robins and try to shoot three games. Pope was a longtime sportscaster for WMAZ Radio and TV and hosted his Saturday football scoreboard show for nearly 40 years. During this time, I also had the privilege of sharing the anchor desk with old Bill and a certain special lady. Eyewitness News at 6 with Tina Hicks. Tina Hicks worked her way from radio to news reception to reporting to becoming a pioneer as the first African-American anchor at 13 WMAZ. Some way, somehow, it all went off without a hitch. We're talking, of course, about President Reagan's visit here to Macon. These people dedicated decades of their lives and became part of yours. There are countless others on and off camera who gave of their time and their talents to keep 13 WMAZ going for the past 70 years. Growing up here in Central Georgia, Warner Robins specifically, I watched Mrs. Tina and Old Bill and the crew. But you know, we've got a lot of veterans on our current staff, like this guy. 
Old Frank Malloy joined Channel 13 as it was known way back in 1982. He transitioned from sports to news in 1993. The very next year, a new reporter named Suzanne Lawler came aboard. Now, just a few years later, in 1997, a local radio DJ named Ben Jones joined the news team as a video journalist and later the eyewitness weather team. 1999 was a big year for the station. A baby-faced Marvin James joined the team as a video journalist, and Mrs. Lori Johnson took her seat next to Frank at the anchor desk. And in 2011, Warner Robins native Miss Caitlin Heck started her internship, then officially joined the news team shortly after as a reporter. Altogether, that's 156 years of dedication to you. Throughout 13W MAZ's history, we have given back to the community, whether it's Stuff the Truck for the Mill Georgia Community Food Bank, Operation Back to School Supply Drives, or Race for the Cure to Fight Breast Cancer. Our mission to serve the community means we care about the causes that matter to you. And of course, who could forget the telethons? The Muscular Dystrophy Association Labor Day Telethon started on the national level in the mid-1950s, and it was appointment watching. Entertainers doing what they do best to raise money to fight the debilitating disease. 13WMAZ started airing and hosting the telethon in the early 1980s, later partnering with the Macon Bibb and Warner Robins Fire Departments to raise money. And so I think Warner Robins Fire Department was just... Um, if you will, pardon the pun, they were on fire for helping the community that needed help, and that was the Muscular Dystrophy Association. And it was a lot of work, but a lot of fun, too. And in the early 2000s, when a hurricane headed towards central Georgia and forced then-Chief Meteorologist Chris Smith to abandon his telethon hosting duties, it was firefighter Randy Toms to the rescue. Chief Singletary came to me, and he said, here's what I need you to do. I need you to go home. I need you to get a suit and tie. And I need you to come back down here, you're going on the air. The rest is telethon history. Tom's continued to host the telethon with WMAZ anchors and reporters for the next 10 years. WMAZ uh, 13, they connected with us and they became part of our family. And we became part of y'all's family. And it was something that we, it meant a lot to us. Helping families, particularly children, is what the Children's Miracle Network was all about. CMN supports 170 children's hospitals around the country, including the Beverly Knight Olson Children's Hospital in Macon. From the early 1990s to 2015, you could mark your calendar for the first weekend in June for the Children's Miracle Network Telethon. It was a chance to thank sponsors, shine a light on the important work the children's hospital does, and to raise money. Frank Malloy, Suzanne Lawler, Mary Therese, and Ben Jones, along with many others, led the charge. They already had that relationship with the viewers. And when those viewers knew that MT, Frank, and Suzanne, and Ben, and any of the other announcers said, you know what, this is important to us, this is important to the station, those viewers called in. It's all part of building a legacy, not unlike 13 WMAZ, working to make things a little bit better for generations to come. We have a physical building because of what the partnership has been with Children's Miracle Network, WMAZ, but also the continuation of the funds being raised by Children's Miracle Network. As you can tell from some of those telethons here at 13 WMAZ, we know how to have a good time. Some of our happiest memories are sharing fun times with you. Well, there you have it. Which one of these seven will outlast their fellow survivors and win $5,000? I got the chance to be Jeff Probst when we launched Survivor Central Georgia at the height of the reality show's popularity. Art's lost. I think he's really lost. We've covered decades of parades where you were the stars of the show. And when a certain Central Georgia Little League team made it to the world stage, we cheered with you. And during football Indeed, season, we highlight the talent of local athletes on FFN. It's been a Friday night tradition for over 35 years. And don't forget the festivals. We've been there for every Cherry Blossom Festival since the first one in 1983. And we're always fired up to flip pancakes in Dublin for St. Patrick's. From holidays to the fair and more, when you're having a good time, we want to be part of the fun. Stay with us as 13 WMAZ celebrates 70 years. 13 WMAZ Listening Lab, it's ready, the ears are ready, and we are ready to listen.
The Listening Lab started in 2020, but 13 WMAZ's focus on what you think is not new. We'll take a look at the ways your voice drives what we do every day. Here's some 13 WMAZ trivia for you. Who was the first person's voice to be heard on air on 13 WMAZ? The answer after the break. Coming straight from the heart, straight from the heart. You know that straight from the heart comes easy at WMAZ. This was a tough one. Who was the first person's voice to be heard on air on 13 WMAZ? The answer is Albert Sanders, the station's first general manager. And I recall sitting in the uh, announcer's booth. Uh, feeling that half of Macon was tuned in and I was extremely nervous. I recall that very much. Here at 13 WMAZ, our focus has always been on you telling your stories. But we've also done an awful lot of listening through the years. Caitlin Heck takes a look back at the many ways we've been able to do that since the very beginning. First off, we have a birthday brunch to celebrate. Through life's ups. Down tree on Robert Webb Road. Downs and everywhere in between. At the center of all that we do is keeping the focus on you. And that started long before social media. So let's take a trip down memory lane. This is from an anniversary special we ran back in 1988. Some of you might remember a few of these programs that ran right here on 13. Let's find a way viewers were able to call in their questions or their problems and get advice and counseling from a panel of local ministers. And probably the most remembered of the kids shows at that time the Jack and Jolly Show. In the 80s, our general manager, Don McGurk, continued our commitment to making your voice heard. We decided we would, be, we would become very active in the community. That's our editorial board's opinion. What's yours? He became the face of the 13 WMAZ editorials. If you would like to sound off on an issue that's important to you, please write us at this address. Even our junior journalist program began as a way to share the voices of some of our youngest viewers with no story too big for these kids. Mr. President, I wanted to ask you one quick question, okay? Why did you choose to come to Macon a second time? Well, because I haven't been to Macon since I've actually been running for president this time. And I liked it very much when I came last time. Then we took the journey to better health right along with you. In 2003, 13 WMAZ launched the It Starts With the Heart program. And one of our latest projects, WMAZ Listening Lab, it's ready, the ears are ready, and we are ready to listen to you. From Macon to Perry and so many places in between, our Listening Lab hit the road to take a pulse on what's most important to you. We're listening to you. Come talk to us. But even without the giant ears, we're always listening because our focus is always you. Caitlin Heck, 13 WMAZ News. Another notable program we aired here on 13, Ebony Speaks. It first aired in the 70s and was one of the first shows in the country specifically focused on the black community in central Georgia. Hosts included Leroy Thomas, Angel Irving, Laverne West, and Tina Hicks. We ask you to share your 13 WMAZ memories. Here are a few. Hey, look, Frank, Tony Hood <laughs> shared this selfie of you. He said you made his birthday special. Oh, happy to hear that, sir. John Croom of Kathleen shared this pic from a few years ago when Ben and I got to drive some of the Shriners scat cat cars. Fun times. This one goes way back. Rachel Avery shared this ad for the Sunday News featuring a cartoon likeness of her granddad, Hugh Beatty, who reported news and weather in the early days. Long before 13 WMAZ was on TV, Robbins Air Force Base first opened in support of World War II. 13 WMAZ developed a close connection with Central Georgia's largest employer and the members of the military, supported by the many missions here. Back 60 and 61, I did a show live from Robbins Air Force Base every Monday morning at 9. Would you believe that? Every Monday morning at 9, live. That was the 1960s when 13 WMAZ was so new, we were still broadcasting in black and white. By the 1970s, we were in color. And then President Jimmy Carter was a frequent flyer on the flight line. Air Force One would land at the base before Mr. Carter headed onto planes. 
In the 80s, another craft touched down at Robbins, Space Shuttle Atlantis. Crews had little more than an hour's notice to prepare, but they did so well, Space Shuttle Discovery made a stop the very next year. Hey. The 90s were a tense time. Robbins provided vital support during the Gulf War and faced the possibility of downsizing. Congress held the base realignment and closure hearings, known as BRAC, and Central Georgia rallied to keep Robbins off that list. In the 90s and after 2000, 13 WMAZ supported the men and women serving our country at other bases around the world through the USO tour. I'm going to come down here because I told you that we had a few surprises for you. Mary Therese connected with Central Georgians serving overseas and honored their sacrifice of time away from family. Through new missions, changes in leadership, and flying high at the air show, 13 WMAZ stands behind Robbins Air Force Base. Want more 13 WMAZ history? We'll tell you how to access hours of archive footage. Plus a very special This Is Home. Stay with us. As we go to break, a little trivia for you. What year did 13 WMAZ introduce Straight From The Heart as its station slogan? The answer when we come back. We're coming straight from the heart, straight from the heart, you know that, straight from the heart comes easy at WMAZ. Did you know the answer? What year did 13 WMAZ introduce straight from the heart as its slogan? It was 40 years ago, 1983. You can dive into the station's history for yourself. First, go to 13 WMAZ's YouTube channel on the Home tab. Scroll down and you'll see Straight from the Archives playlist. We continue to add footage regularly. You can also watch this and other 13 WMAZ special content on 13 WMAZ+. Find the app on your Amazon Fire or Roku device. Thank you for joining us to celebrate 70 years of 13 WMAZ. Our mission is still the same, to serve the community with transparency and integrity every day. And be there for you straight from the heart. Now, it's not Friday, but here's a look back at 70 years. This is home. Yeah, it's going down. down. We're about to live it up, y'all. Let's go. It's a big world, and now we're loving this town. It's our turn. So put your hands up, we on the big screen. And everybody's here living out our dreams, dreams, whoa. Yeah, yeah. Don't be scared, take a chance, come on, give me a hand. It's time to laugh, time to smile, now let's get up and dance. 